Hey, hey, and welcome to another Tech Tuesday. This is Chad from Ascension Worship, and this week I'm going to show you how to identify and fix phasing issues. Hey, 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 what do you say? Yes, it's that time again. It's Tech Tuesday. All right, admittedly, this is a little bit of a niche video that we're talking about today. Um, this is based off of an issue that I experienced at a local church recently. Um, and it got me thinking that this is the kind of thing that, um, as sound engineers, especially in today's age where we have a lot of really great technology, but sometimes that can cause its own issues, you need to learn how to hear phasing issues that you might actually be doing in your sound system and then learn how to fix those if they're an issue. So real quick, I'll, I'll demonstrate what that sounds like and then I'll go through uh, how you can fix that. So I was at a church recently where um, we had been there years before. Since that time, they've gotten a new uh, new worship leader. Uh, they have a Midas M32 uh, and they just needed me to come in and kind of touch up the board. It'd been a little while. Um, I, we had to do this on a Wednesday night during a service, which is not ideal, but it is what it is. Um, and one thing that in talking to the worship leader, the senior pastor and the main audio tech, um, beforehand, they'd all mentioned issues with the pastor's microphone. Um, and, uh, and when the guest pastor got up that night, uh, it immediately became obvious to me that it was not an EQ issue like they had thought it was. Um, it was a phasing issue. And a real quick demonstration, it sounded something like this. And hopefully you can hear this well uh, if whatever you're listening to, you know, to watch this video. Um, but it's very hollow sounding, um, very unnatural sounding. And uh, this poor sound guy had spent weeks, months, maybe years at this point, trying to fix this microphone with EQ. You cannot fix that kind of phasing issue with EQ. That is a different kind of issue. So real quick explanation of it. When you have the same audio or same source, in this case, my voice, and it's picking up in two different channels and those channels are offset in time from one another. They interact like that. Um, they cause this weird kind of coarsey, flangey um, sound as the two waveforms are slightly out of sync from each other. So three things that you need to check for that are likely going to be one of the possible causes for this. First one, make sure that you don't have multiple microphones open at a time. So uh, this is going to sound um, similar, but a little bit different. The first thing I checked for, again, this is during Wednesday night service, pastors on stage, and it sounded like that, and I knew something was wrong. First thing I checked for is I went through their scene, and I made sure that that was the only microphone that we were hearing at that time. So what I'm going to demonstrate real quick is um, what you could run into if you have multiple microphones close to each other, but not quite lined up to the source, in this case, my voice. So we have a shotgun microphone that I'm talking into right now for this video. I've got off camera um, just a handheld microphone, and I'm going to be bringing this closer and further from my mouth uh, while I'm talking. And you'll be hearing both microphones, and you should hear something kind of similar to what we just heard. So uh, here is both mics on. Check one, two, one, two, one, two. And I'm moving the mic for closer and further away. Check, check one, two. Hey. Hopefully you heard something similar. Um, but in this particular example, this church, that was not the issue. That was not this sound right here. Um, so the next thing you need to check for, step two, is make sure that your routing is proper going to your main mix. So what I mean by that is that I have seen in instances before where someone has accidentally sent um, like an in-ear mix or something to the main mix. Um, and so the way to check that on this board is you're going to go to your bus master page on the board, again, X32 or M32, um, and then you are going to, starting with bus one, you're going to work your way down through all the channels. And if you're on the board, 
you need to look next to the board where it says stereo bus. That needs to be turned off for any um, in-ear mix, monitor mix, effects, any of that kind of stuff. Um, very few times will you need that on um, maybe for a subgroup, which we'll talk about in a little bit here. But that needs to be off. Um, on the app, I'm going to, again, select, in this case, the base in-ear mix. I'm going to go up here to the main page, and then there's that same button just on the editing app. And I'm just going to go through each channel real quick, each uh, bus, all 16 of them, and none of those are sending to that. So that's, that's good. So um, step three, same, similar but different, is to make sure your routing is correct going to your matrices. So real quick explanation, um, if we have basically three types of channels, you've got individual channels. So in this case, my microphone is an individual channel. Um, that feeds into a mix. A mix is a mix of individual channels you know, leveled out. So um, in this case, our main mix is what you're currently hearing um, right now. It's my microphone turned up going to that mix. Well, then you also have matrices. A matrix is a mix of mixes. So I can't send my microphone directly to a matrix, but I can send it to the main mix and then the main mix to the matrix. So for example, this church, you can see on here, we have three matrices that they're using. Main left and main right, these are their two main array speakers that they have in the room. And then also they have a matrix for the subs. So what's happening is everything gets mixed to the main mix. The main mix feeds into these other matrices. And you can see we have different levels for the different groups. Uh, and then we have different EQ and processing going on to make them sound good together. Okay, so with that understood, what is happening is everything goes to the main mix, main mix goes to the matrix matrices. None of these mixes, um, like the base in ear mix, should be going to any of our matrices. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select, in this case, the base mix. Um, up here, I'm going to go to the sends tab. <coughs> oh. Excuse me. I'm going to go up here to the sends tab. And you can see here are my six matrices. And this one's set correctly because you can see it's not being sent to the subs or the main mixes. So I'm going to go through and check all these real quick. And there's our problem. Somehow, at some point, they had accidentally sent, in this case, their main, or sorry, their stream audio for their live stream. They also were sending a tiny bit of that to the um, main array speakers. And that was what we were hearing that sounded like this. So two things that are happening with this that we need to be aware of. One, because we're sending a different mix back into our main speakers, we're changing the balance of what was going on. Now, what was interesting is that apparently we were actually having this issue the entire Wednesday night service, but it wasn't obvious until the pastor got on stage. And the reason for that was because the stream audio is made to sound good on a little phone, and so we have certain things turned down, like most of the band elements, and we have certain things turned up, in this case, the speaking microphones, especially the pastor's microphone, and even more especially because it was a lavalier microphone, and so we had to crank it like crazy to make it sound good online. Um, so even though we were hearing this on, say, like the worship leader's microphone earlier in the service, um, it was less of an issue because it wasn't as loud in the stream mix and just the nature of that microphone already having reverb and delay on there. It wasn't quite as obvious until you had a very clean speaking microphone up there. And then it was like, whoa, that's not what that should sound like. <laughs> the other thing, and this is the important part of what I'm talking about today, is that because the live stream mix is also going through um, some extra processing. It's going through a limiter, an insert. Um, and what that insert does um, is it creates a slight bit of latency. So again, if they were both in time with each other, it would just be louder with the pastor's microphone. But because they were also offset in time, that's what causes that weird phasing thing that you're hearing right there. And if you're hearing online, 
the um, the limiter without hearing the original signal, you it sounds fine. It sounds amazing. That's what it's supposed to do. Um, but this kind of misrouting in the system is what was causing that issue. So um, again, someone got into a menu they shouldn't have. What we ended up doing just to try and make this less of an issue in the future um, is we went through every single bus <laughs> and not only had them turned down, which is how they were to begin with, but we also muted them going to each uh, matrix so that someone would have to do at least three steps to accidentally do that again. Um, so hopefully more foolproof this time. Um, but Kudos to the sound guy. Um, you know, I, I'm not sure if it was him or someone else that accidentally caused that, but he was doing his best every week to try and EQ that issue out. And again, EQ will not fix that issue. You have to find the routing problem and fix it. Um, and as soon as we did that, like during the service, like it was amazing because the whole room went like, whoa, like all of a sudden the microphone sound like it should. And, you know, all that EQ, we could kind of undo that because that wasn't helping to begin with. Um, it sounded a lot more natural as soon as we fixed that issue. One final thing on this note um, that I think is important for us to talk about. Um, we have so many cool things that we can do with digital mixers these days. And there's a lot of studio techniques that people will teach you to use in your live mixer. And, um, and some of those are really good and some of those are unnecessary and cause these types of issues. One of them that I want to bring up in particular is um, the dangers of misrouting parallel processing. Um, I've got another video that I will link at the end of this one that goes into this a lot more when it comes to the X32 and how to do parallel compression on drums. Um, this is a very common thing I've seen at churches where they don't understand the concepts we're talking about today, and they incorrectly um, route a separate bus for their drums um, with an insert on there, and it causes, um, again, this sound on there. But sometimes that's not obvious if you haven't trained your ear, especially if you're in a room where the drums are really loud naturally. So real quick for today's video, I'm going to demonstrate a similar issue using a vocal microphone. So I'm currently uh, on a Behringer uh, XR18. Uh, I've got the editing app open on here so you can see what's going on. I have made, you can see over here, a vocal group. Um, and that is currently not turned on in the, uh, the, the main mix. Um, but what's happening here, this might be something you might do to kind of control a group of vocals. Um, I have put an insert on that, and I've put in here, just for the sake of example, the dual combinator. This is basically a multiband compressor. Um, and I just turned it on. I haven't changed any settings or anything. But if you were to turn that on in the main mix, it would sound like this, very similar to the issue we're having um, with that uh, live stream issue in the X32. Um, so again, what's happening is we're hearing my vocal twice. It's going from the microphone straight to the main mix, and it's also going into this vocal group with the combinator on there, and then that is going to the main mix. I'm going to turn that off for a second because it's annoying to talk through. Um, and that is causing that weird phasing issue. Now, this is actually very easy to fix. Um, what we want to do is we just want to eliminate our microphone going straight to the main left mix. Because again, the issue is the offset, the latency that's caused by this plugin. Now, if you hear it by itself, it doesn't sound that bad. But when you hear the both of them together, that's the issue. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that back in. So we're hearing both right now. And I'm going to select my vocal. I'm going to go to our main page on here. And I'm simply going to take that out of the main mix. So now we are hearing the vocal not going straight to the main mix. It's going to the vocal group. Vocal group has a combinator on it. And then that is going to the main mix. And that will fix your issue with what you're hearing at front of house. All right, guys, I hope that was helpful to someone out there. Um, again, there will be more videos linked at the end that you might want to watch about drum compression. Um, but if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the YouTube comment section below. And until next time, have a great week. 
Again, this is Chad from Ascension Worship. I hope this has been helpful for you and your team. Come back here every Tuesday for new information.